All right, so this is a continuation continuation of the uh, <coughs> the Zebrush decimation tutorial. I'll just show the basics of uh, you know the important tools that I will use myself when re topologizing uh, a mesh from Zebrush or even a mesh in Max. It doesn't have to be from Zebrush. <coughs> so uh, it'll just be a basic run through of the tools, quick overview if you will. So first thing we'll do here, we'll select our uh, Mesh, you can see this is the same mesh we export from ZBrush. Decimate it, triangulate it. And uh, first thing we do, we name it ref. And we go to an editable poly. Poly on subobject selection. And we went to our free form tools here in the graphite modeling tool set. You'll see here this icon, the little pencil with the sphere, drawn surface. Here. Open the drop down, draw on grid, draw on surface, draw on selection. We want the uh, draw on surface. You can see here ref selected because I already had it selected from earlier, but you'd click on that, that would usually say pick. And we pick that that object. And oh sorry. That seems to be I don't know what happened there. I'll just rename it. REF. Um <coughs> so we pick again. There we go. Now that's the selected um, object that we will create geometry on, new geometry. So this is the offset. I usually set it to between 0.1 and 0.2. I'll leave it at 0.2 for this. And if you open this, uh, expand this poly draw tab, click new object, you'll create an empty Ezra poly object. So the first tool we look at here is a uh, step build. If you hover over any, any of the tools, you'll get a little tool tip drop down that'll give you all the hotkeys. Keys are very important when using these tools because uh, once you get used to them, you know you can you can manipulate your mesh very quickly. And when used in conjunction with the, uh, the standard uh, command panel tools, it's very uh, you know it's an efficient tool set for you to apologize. So select step build here, Alt W to maximize the view. Now you can see. Click on the screen, left click, we create points, we hold down shift and drag, we'll create um we'll create a face, I'll just change the colour here to something else. <coughs> so we can keep clicking and then shift and drag while well, the mouse button's held down to create quads. Other hockey, so you can take a look at them yourself. But uh, you know, control click deletes a face, leaves the vert. Alt click deletes the vert. So uh, I don't really use step build too much. Basically, my favorite tool here is extend. I'd, I'd find myself using that most of the time. So basically, with extend, you want to uh, shift drag over an edge, and that'll pull out a new quad. Or you can just left click drag over a vert and that will pull out a quad or you can pull here it'll pull out um, a triangular or a quadrangle if you will a four sided try or a four pointed try so I'm just undo that control Z also you can um, control alt to bridge between faces so shift drag control alt drag Bridges and then another handy one is Control Shift Drag and that'll drag out an entire edge loop. So you know you can the likes of you know large surfaces with a little change in the uh, <coughs> in the coverage of the surface or you know you can just drag these out pretty quickly. But uh, another universal hotkey command them. Um, that works across all of these tools is uh, you hold down Control Shift Alt, and that will allow you to move the verts around. Now the other this um, this tool here is uh, the optimized tool. You can um, you can see here what it does. You can target weld. 
it's actually quite handy but a lot of the times I just right click out of the tool and I'll use the command panel or the quad menu um, so I'll just give you a quick example of that, go back into extend I'll just drag out some random faces, control alt shift and move the verts around shift drag, control alt shift shift drag shift drag control alt shift and we can hold the uh, control and alt to bridge across so an example would be right click to get out of the tool border selection select the border right click cap now we can use our cut tool sorry I can just quit quick slice we can use the cut tool so we'll cut across here and then you can go up here to modeling Swift Loop. Oh, Swift Loop is a great tool, one of my favorites. <coughs> so if you hold down Shift and you click Swift Loop, it'll maintain the volume and centralize the, the new edge loop between existing edges. Right click to end the tool. And then we can use our tools connect so you get the picture. So it's handy to use these in conjunction, or as I say, if you want it. I, I don't really use that much. Um, once you, I suppose, I'm just used to doing it the way I do it. So that's basically um, the tools I use. It's a good idea for you to to go in and just practice, practice on a sphere, whatever. Just get used to it. Get used to the hotkeys. And you know, muscle memory. The more you do it, the quicker you, you know. You don't even think about the hotkeys. You don't even have to look up here. But uh, here are some of the other tools available. We have uh, the shapes tool. It just draws a massive angle. On. I've never really used that for anything. Then you have this polygon strip still. It just draws strips. It may be handy for something like an eye. You know, just to quickly get it Ooh, drawn in. Well, obviously not like that, but you can go into extend in it. Control Alt, bridge that up. <coughs> Once you get the idea, you can change the size of the um, the strips that it draws. I haven't used it in a while, but I thought it was in here somewhere. Maybe not. Um, I don't actually remember. I don't want to change the size of the strips. Minimum distance settings. Not expensive, sorry, yeah, minimum distance. So, we'll say. again and you can see tiny 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 strips so something a bit more usable might be you know torty might be a bit more usable and um, also there is this can be quite handy sometimes not for you to apologize but for other things you might be you know could be anything, pipes, tubes, electrical cables. You can just freehand draw a spline on the surface. Obviously, it's off seconds that we've set over here. <coughs> or a set topology brush. You might recognize this anyone that uses ZBrush. You know, you just draw grids the same as the ZBrush topology brush. And it just creates quads. Right click down the tool. And, you know, it's just. Now you might be wondering where are the verts gone, but it's because I don't have a sub object selected here. You can select verts to see them. Unfortunately, this uh, <coughs> the gizmo ghost of gizmo stays over the, the last selected one, so I usually um, stay on edges or faces. Doesn't really matter, but you're going to know where your verts are anyway. So uh, that's basically it. Have a play. Oh, one other thing, actually, I'll. Uh, Grab the uh, Control Alt Shift and just mess this up a bit. Tangle up the, <coughs> the geometry. This uh, the Shift Brush, sorry, not the Shift Brush, the Relax Soften Brush. Um, unfortunately, you know, Auto Desk didn't carry across the fancy new uh, <coughs> 
coarser for the shift brush and all these other new brushes. They didn't carry it across to the relaxed softness, so, so that's the legacy old school brush. But anyway, maybe in a future update, hotkeys or control shift, adjust the radius, alt shift to adjust the strength. And I'm just holding on the left mouse button and going up and down with the mouse. So you can see here, this can be handy for it. just like the, the shift smooth brush and uh, brush just averages out the uh, the vert spacing between edges and faces and um, unfortunately these other tools like for instance the uh, the shift if you do move along the surface it won't stick but if that happens to you just go back to any of these tools control alt shift and it'll stick back down again it'll automatically once you just all you have to do is grab it and wiggle it a bit and let it snap back to the surface so that's pretty much it I'll just uh, another thing I like to do is as you can see the way if I press F3 you know it's a mess here it's horrible visually to work with not very pleasant at all so I have uh, it's, I think it's on by default in later versions of Max if I right click here, shade it, the display select, the display select with edge faces. You know, you want to leave that checked when you're re topologizing like this. Or uh, you can access it from here, right click, configure viewports, display select with edge faces. So I like to, you know, leave that on. It's, so it makes for a much more pleasant visual experience. So, <coughs> another thing you can do is a dark material, just a bog standard material, no reflection or specking around on it, just a dark material. Ooh, apply it to your ref and create it. Like this just an orange or a yellow, or bright blue, whatever color floats your boat, and it tickles your fancy. And just apply that to your newly created mesh, and it just gives it, like you know, again, it's a nice contrasted. is not the most exciting thing in the world so I you can do to to boost the uh, experience can only be a good thing huh right so that's basically it and uh, have fun cheers good luck